You good, mom? Hi, baby. How you doing? <laughs> How are you? Whenever you're ready. To my babies. I come outside to the backyard every morning when I can be here alone. One day when I was sitting out here, a butterfly flew around me. And on one of the wings, I noticed there was a, a little tiny hole. And then I said to the butterfly, you're beautiful. You aren't perfect. But you are free. We have come a long way from Chicago. We sang and listened to gospel music through most of the entire 1200 mile drive. I have no idea what's going to happen after we leave here, but I have to get my strength back while we're here. I have to find the parts of me that I've lost. I'm not much like I was before you girls were born. In fact, the more I think about it, the more I realize that I have been broken like the way a wild horse is tamed, but not anymore. And I'm going to find my bad ass self again. I have to get my power back so I can give it to you all. Even as young as you are, I see you. I see the one of you who is timid. I see the one of you who loves attention. I see the one of you who thinks very little is serious. And I see the fighter. I love being your mommy. Having you is the best and most important thing I have ever done in my life. And I plan to see you through this. And every other thing that will come your way, I will be there. I'm not sorry that I took you with me when I left you, Mom, but I just need you to understand that whatever I do, it's for you and how you deserve the best of everything. I love you. Thank you. I wrote you a letter back. Would you like to hear it? Of course I'd like to hear. Dear Mama, I was only three years old when we left home to go to the shelter. Tomorrow, I will be 21. I am writing to you all these years later to say thank you. Thank you for choosing to leave. Thank you for choosing to live. When I tell people that my earliest memories are in a domestic violence shelter, they look at me as if I have survived war. I let them know that shelters are the refuge, not the war, that there is nothing sad about reaching safety. Perhaps it is only the rose tint of retrospection, but to me, those are beautiful memories. In my mind's eye, you are sitting on porches gazing at butterflies. I remember beach water and gospel music and putting ice cubes in our too hot, too salty 99 cent ramen. It may have eased some of your worries to know that when I look back on those days, I remember feeling free. I will admit there were points where I was not as understanding as I am now. When I went away to boarding school as a teenager, I remember hating you for the first time. It was after a friend invited me over for a sleepover. Her parents cooked dinner and we all ate together in the dining room of the enormous home her father built for them. 
I asked her before we went to bed, do you all eat together normally or only when guests come over? She told me that was business as usual. When her mom drove me back to the dorms the next day, I kept my hand over my mouth to muffle the sound of my tears. I did not want to leave their home. And for the week after that I did not return your phone calls, I wished we didn't have to leave our home either all those years ago. Shortly after our sleepover, that same friend pulled me aside after school. She said her parents were alcoholics. She said their outbursts had become unbearable. It was then that I realized even a mansion is a cage if you feel trapped inside of it. I called you that same night and when you picked up, you said, hey baby, I was just thinking of you. Dear mama, I am writing to you now to say thank you for always thinking of me. I know our childhoods were not what you'd hope they would be. I know you didn't dream of raising us alone or moving homes in secret or any of the other things women do to reach safety. But you and I both know that it was worth it. The experience of single motherhood, the embarrassment of us all sharing one room, having to thrift all of our clothes. I consider those small prices to pay for freedom. I do not say all of this to minimize or romanticize the pain. There is no poetry in a throbbing jaw or a bruised rib or a broken home. <laughs> it's true that there are things, beautiful things, I grew up never knowing. I do not know what it's like to watch my parents slow dance in the kitchen or celebrate an anniversary or greet me after school. But what I did grow up knowing is far more significant. Because of you, I know that love does not make a choke chain out of your name to keep you from leaving. I know that love does not show up at your job and call you words that sound like sewage. Because of you, I know and have always known that love does not give you motion sickness. It is not a dizzying drunk thing. It is neither rock nor hard place, nor is it a siren in the night. I learned about what love really is because you were courageous enough to declare what love was not, could not, and will never be, violent. There is little I could tell your past self that you likely didn't already know. You were right. We will be all right. The material things will come and go and come again. The timid one has become a strong man. The attention seeking one has an honors degree from Columbia University. Your fun loving child can sing like a Billie Holiday reincarnate and the fighter, the fussy three-year-old turning 21 tomorrow. I am two semesters away from getting a bachelor's degree from Harvard University. Not bad for some shelter kids, eh? Mama. Mama, I am writing to you all these years later to say thank you, to say you made the right decision. You couldn't have known it as you sat on the back porch of that shelter, mom. But that little hole in the butterfly's wing was always there to let the light through. Since your youngest daughter, I love, you. I love you. I love you all so much. And I'm so proud of you all. <laughs> Thank you for understanding. Thank you. Happy birthday, baby. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> I 
I want them to know it's okay to leave. That's all I want.